Many times I had to ask myself, is the club worth the price? <laughs> this question became important to me after realizing I had spent years battling to fit into groups. Every group, small or large, has a criteria of acceptance. A person aiming to join a sports club may purchase a jersey. The person joining a car club will be more likely to buy a premium car. Most clubs have a monetary cost, but there is a greater price for membership. Your self-esteem, worth, and identity are also a part of the deal. When we choose to fit in, we adapt to the group's values. We take on the club's identity and suppress our own. Identity shapes how we view the world and make decisions. So the groups that you are or are not in help you create reality. The habits and behaviors that determine success, wealth, happiness can all be found in groups. Humans naturally seek acceptance from our peers. Cliques are formed as a result, small groups that reinforce our self of belonging. Many modern day cliques are held together by social media apps, showcasing each other's lifestyles for admiration, shopping for all the merchandise that we need to be considered cool or accepted virtually through stories, reels, and boomerangs. Possessions are a critical aspect to identity and social acceptance. What we own is a symbol of who we are and what brands we associate with. The clothes we wear are directly linked to the clubs we choose to associate with. Workout Warriors by Under Armour or Lululemon, Dressing to Impress by Fendi or Prada. Ever met a person who makes a point to mention the brand of their clothes after a compliment? Oh, well, thank you. I bought this at the Louis Vuitton factory while away at a weekend getaway. <laughs> or better yet, I waited all night in line for these to release. I'm like, okay, I didn't ask that, but <laughs> thank you, thank you, really. These individuals have been programmed to believe the story behind their purchase is important to who they are, so much that they will go out their way to tell you, even if you're a complete stranger. These people have fallen into the club mentality. The club mentality is a state of mind that without association to a group, you're worth less or appear less interesting. During middle school, it was a difficult time for me to fit in. Fashion was the pinnacle of self-worth. Cool kids were designer brands and made fun of who did. My mother was a firm believer of less is more. She didn't buy the latest $250 Michael Jordan sneakers. New designs will be released every month, making it impossible for Jordans to fit into our family budget. I'm a banker, so I analyzed it mathematically. $250, the price of the shoe, multiplied by 12, which is the number of pairs released in a year, equals 3,000. Remember that figure. As children, we lack the perspective to understand money and value. So kids with the latest gear tended to pick on the ones who, with that, who went without. Most of, the, most of a child's possessions are gifts, but that didn't stop them from flaunting it as if they bought it themselves. I was one of the kids that got picked on. My self-esteem suffered over superficial items. Resentment grew towards everyone around me, my peers, my mother, my classmates. Behavior issues developed as I tried to battle through the adversity. I challenged teachers and every other authority in my life, often skipping school in the process. I found a new series, a new sense of freedom the day I graduated middle school. Relieved to join a new social club, I could wear what I wanted and be who I wanted to be. That's how I lived for the next four years. I was free of the copy and paste appearance until I went to college. Scarred by the club mentality imposed in middle school, I spent, remember the 3,000 that I was telling you guys about? Okay, I spent that on designer clothes to come to college. I figured that if I was going to be, to, if I was going to endure another four years of school, I was going to be in the club this time. I was so scarred by the club mentality that I became hyper-focused on each article of clothing rather than going over the syllabus. I was so scarred by the club mentality that I forgot to email the, my roommates I would be living with. I was so scarred by the club mentality that I even neglected to choose a meal plan. <laughs> All I cared about was Nike, Jordan, of course, North Face, Ralph Lauren, Nautica, and many more brands compiled in the back of the seat of my mother's car. When I arrived on campus in New Hampshire, I quickly realized something. It was a bizarre something, but satisfying. 
Students came to class dressed for comfort. Soft skills, compassion, and life experience held more value to them. The clothes I wore made little to no difference to my peers. Everyone was focused on doing well in the class, participating in the community, and networking with purpose. Performance outweighed any material possessions in the ranks of this new club. This made me ecstatic to know that I could control my destiny without fear of being judged of my appearance. Shortly after this revelation, I became a student leader. Reflecting on my experience, I began to view the contrast in these two environments as a sign. A sign that maybe the clubs are designed to cloud our inner selves. I realized that my club membership were fueled by a desire for acceptance, but I did not need them. Maybe I'm perfectly fine without the smoke and mirrors, that what I've accomplished in life is impressive enough to where I didn't need any bedazzling. Even still, I fell victim to trendy possessions while out shopping. I would find myself interested in things that were mediocre but branded. Some of these items really portrayed my individual sense of style, but I knew if I made the purchase, I would be socially acceptable. I call this trauma associated with the club mentality. Even though I've experienced the other side while at college, my subconscious would steer me different. It's sad because these brands may have conveyed a certain status to the world, but symbolized none of who I truly am. Fast forward a few years, I started full-time employment in corporate America as a mortgage banker at Greenwich, Connecticut. The region is Fairfield County, one of the wealthiest places in the United States. The average driver-driven car is an upward of 65,000. So let me illustrate. A BMW M Series is the prerequisite. <laughs> Seniors in high school drive those casually. All right? A Mercedes-Benz AMG is an everyday to work, to work and from school type of vehicle. People drive Porsche 911s on the weekend to go golf. There's a reason why these vehicles casually roam through the streets of Greenwich, Connecticut. They're a status symbol. Early in my career, I formed an intriguing relationship with an executive at the company. We went to lunch and discussed the past, present, and future. Order sushi and some water I can't pronounce. <laughs> it came in a decanter, okay? So if anybody, don't let the suit fool you. I really, <laughs> not me. Listen, I'm used to tap every day, bottled water. Any water that comes in a vase is certainly not in my price range. <laughs> During our, our lunch, we drew on the topic of expensive watches. After I realized he sported a Rolex Oyster Perpetual. Okay. So this watch may seem like it's just an average watch, but it cost $8,000. And the price of a watch that I bought previously was a Michael Kors, it was $250. I bought the $250 watch as my commencement gift. At that time, I had no idea the vast difference between Michael Kors and Rolex is many thousands of dollars. Towards the end of the conversation, he insisted that we go Rolex shopping one day, and once we did that, I will be in the club. His exact words. I left the lunch date inspired simply because an executive invited me into his club. Inspired enough to go home and Google Rolex, found their homepage and refined the search to show price low to high. <laughs> I realized the most basic watch worth buying is about 8,000. Yeah, 8,000 on that timepiece. They can range all the way to 50,000. Right. Needless to say, I'll be skipping out on the club this time around. <laughs> I, I quickly asked myself, who does this guy think I am? I asked that same question to myself for the entire week. Who does this guy think I am? On the seventh day, finally, I rephrased the question with, who am I? Here's why I identified with who I am and how parts of myself are the root cure for not being accepted in the club or after choosing not to be in the club. The cost of the club shows up as monetary, but it's really just that. It's a loss of self-identity, self-esteem, and worth. I resented school children, my mother, and suppressed my achievements to satisfy social trends. I even allowed the opinions of others to cloud my better judgment. It's time that we become one with the aspects that matter most. Often enough, we deflate important realizations of ourselves because we are our own worst critics. 
We spend too, far too much time thinking we could be better if we had what others had, instead of magnifying the things we already have. First, I had to remember who I was as an individual. I'm an accomplished college graduate with an associate's and bachelor's degree. I'm now successfully earning a master's degree. I'm a great spouse, hopefully. That'll, <laughs> that'll be the next TED Talk. <laughs> and bragworthy son. Second, I started wearing the accolades that couldn't be seen. Once I broke barriers and became successful, I was told to express my humbleness more often, which sometimes can sound like suppress your achievements when coming from the wrong person or people. We may be our own worst critics, but it never hurts as bad as hearing those same things from others. Never shy away from speaking on the accolades that aren't readily seen. Lastly, I spend a lot of time around people who contradict the social narrative. These people are, are identified as like-minded. The existence unbound, they exist unbound from society's plagues and things that may have traumatized me. They will accept and appreciate you for who you are and won't make you feel like suppressing your achievements are bragging. They will tap into you in, the inner, in your inner soul. When you find these people, you'll realize they are priceless. So I encourage you to remember these three things when you're up against a similar situation. Ask yourself if the club is really worth the price. What are you giving up to belong? How much are you willing to pay? Ask yourself another question. Who are you as an individual? Probably a lot more than you're giving yourself credit for. Remember, you are entitled to all those acolytes, tangible and intangible. And finally, forget those social constructs. And find like-minded people who appreciate and accept you for exactly who you are. They will tap into your, to your nurture, your soul, when you find these people, you'll realize they are priceless and you are exactly who you are and where you need to be.